past couple of weeks, we've actually been working on some exciting features, including the form feature, which I will show you towards the very end of this um, workshop. But if you have any questions at any time, feel free to fill in this form, which I'm going to send you in the chat right now. So this form is actually built using the Plutio form and surveys builder. Um, it's very simple. Uh, it just basically has two fields, name and question. So if you have any questions that you would like me to answer live during the Q&A session towards the end of this workshop, fill in this form, submit your questions. And I will not only show you how this form works, because obviously you'll be able to build your own, but I will answer all these questions live during the Q&A sessions. So again, if you have any questions, fill that form. The link has just been submitted in the chat uh, widget. Okay, so the structure of our webinar today is going to be three sort of uh, phases. The first section is going to be introducing you to the design editor, um, introducing you to the new grid system that we've um, also released recently, and show, show you all the styling options that you now have to customize your proposals, contracts, invoices, and even the upcoming form. I'm going to also introduce you to the style sheet feature, which is CSS. If you, um, if you can code or have any basic level of coding, you will also be able to do some advanced design uh, designs, which I will show you some basics so you can use it um, and, and, and you know, get, get started. Um, after the design, after introducing you to the design editor, I will um, show you the canvas builder, which we've also released recently. So the canvas builder is something very similar to Canva, if you know of Canva. It's basically, it gives you a canvas where you can drag and drop elements such as text, images, icons, and SVG files, so that you can design them however, however way you, you, you want. There is no so restrictions, there is no grid, you can just drag it, drop it, and place it anywhere within the canvas, which gives you, you know, create and limited creativity, unlocked creativity. There is no limit at all or restrictions. I'm going to show you that after introducing you to the design editor. And then after that, after I show you the design editor and the canvas editor, I'm going to also show you the upcoming forms feature and how to use it. So once it's out, you'll be able, you will have an idea of how it can be used and um, how you can style it. Then after that, we will have a QA session, which I will do my best to answer any questions you might have regarding any of the features that we will cover in this workshop or any, or any questions you might have or had in the past. So there is, um, you know, if you have any questions again, submit them in a form that I have just submitted the link in a chat widget. Okay, so as you might be aware, um, we have, I'm gonna switch to my, my screen. So now you should be able to, say my, to see my screen. And I'm now in the templates library. So you might be familiar with this templates library. Um, we've launched it a long time ago, but we haven't been able to create new templates because there hasn't been much of customization options. But now, since we have the editor, you will see a lot of creative and stunning templates coming into the templates library, which are going to be uh, ready to use and free. So the three templates that we've re recently launched, which I will show you in a second and how I built them, is this one, the orange and blue, Blansom Branch, and Rosie. So let's first have a look at um, the orange and blue. I just want to give you an idea of what you can actually achieve with the new design editor. So as you can see, it's no longer just plain white and plain text. It's very colorful. You can do some really creative and funky stuff with it to match your brand. So here I have a background image. I have a big title, proposal title goes here. I have, you know, you, you would have your image here. You would have a, an introduction there. You have multiple sections. So I've created these using the new grid system, which I will show you in a second as well. So you can actually place elements next to each, each other and create some sort of complex grids that are responsive. So this will actually show as great as it, it as shows here on, on mobile devices as well. Um, you can even customize the the uh, the item section here, which your clients can select and select items from. Um, you can see the section here, I've added some creative image to it. Um, and then here's the canvas, which I used to show a quote. Um, and I will show you how to create that as well. So this is one funky template that you can, um, you can just sort of use and play around with. It's in the templates library. Simply go to templates.plutu.com and then you can add it to your uh, templates within a click of a button. The other template here um, is very simple. I'm going to show you, just go back to the templates library. 
Um, here is plants and branch. It's very, very simple. Just wanted to show you how you can sort of, you know, create a, a, a just add a background color, an image, change the color of the text and so on to create something as nice and slick as this. And using the grid system as well, you can obviously create a new gallery. This can be used to showcase your portfolio, your work and so on. And you can create up to three or four grids next to each other and they can be fully responsive as well. So as you can see, this requires minimum customizations, but look what you can do, it's, it's stunning. And then the third one is Rosie. I love this one. It's very sketchy, very nice. It's very bright. See, we've got the illustrations here. This is using the grid system as well. I'm gonna show you how um, here. And then using a little bit of CSS, I was able to move this image a little bit above. So sort of pull it up a little bit to, to create that sort of effect, which makes it look sort of eye-catchy and interesting. Um, here is the table and there is his canvas. So this is the canvas um, builder, which I will also show you how to create something like that. It's very easy, drag and drop and done. And look here, it's, it's brilliant using the grid system. And here's the item section. It's no longer simple, it's no longer plain, it's eye-catchy, you can make it really match your brand. Look at this little illustration at the very end. This sort of touches will really make you stand out and help you win more clients. Um, and now I showed you the three templates. Again, someone is asking for the template URL. It's templates.plutio.com. You can even go to plutio.com and then click on the templates button from the very top. So if you go to plutio.com and then click on templates from the very top menu here, which I can show in a second, you'll be able to access the templates library or simply go to templates.plutio.com. which be something like this. Select the template you would like to, to use um, and then click add template. Choose the workspace you would like to add the template to and then it will be added to your templates library. Then you can use it by in you know, a click of a button. Okay, so here first I showed you the designs that I've created very recently using the design editor. And now what I'm, what, what I'm about to do is to show you how I've created them or at least show you the styling options that you have to create something similar to them or to match these designs to your brand. Um, actually, before doing that, I wanna show you something really cool I've done with invoices today, just before this webinar. See this invoice? So a lot of people um, want it to create the, well, add more details to the header of an invoice or a proposal because we do have a default um, header, which includes the contact details such as uh, the client name, email address, phone number, etc., which is here. So I'm gonna show you very quickly just so you know what I'm talking about. So if you create a new invoice, for example, you will have this header by default, which you can't really customize. You'll be able to change the colors of it, but you can't customize it or add options to it. So for people who want to add more details or customize this even more, you can now delete this section completely and create your own. So I've already created one to show you how it's done and I'm also going to upload it to our templates library so you can easily copy and paste it. So here's the new section I've created and I'm gonna preview it now to show you what I've done. It's pretty funky, it's not everyone's taste, but I just wanted to show you how designing with Plutio is now, you know, it, there is no limits. You can go as wild as you want. See, I've done it all black, it's yellow, and here it's all custom. I can show as many details as I want using smart variables, of course, you can, Prefill all of these details automatically once you assign an invoice to a client. And so I've added more details here. I've even added the amount due here as well. So you can do some really cool stuff just like this with, that, with minimum design um, sort of tweaks or options. So let me now show you how I did these things. So now I'm inside the editor of the um, orange and black template. So I'm gonna sh show you sorry, orange and, orange and blue, which is this one. So this template is actually this one here. So this is the editor of it. And I'm gonna show you what I did to make it look the way it does right now. So if I preview, you can see all of the options here. And now, right here is the new design tab. So if you click on a design tab inside, whether you're inside a proposal, a contract, an invoice or even a form, now you will have a design tab. Clicking on it will give you these options. The first one is 
is is a page style. Um, and actually, before I edit this template, I'm gonna go and create a new one just to, so I can show you what the options are. So here we're gonna start with a simple one. I'm gonna add some text here just so we can have something to play with. So test text goes here. Now I'm gonna go to the design tab. So the page style has a layout. So currently the layout by default is centered as in the page is centered in the middle and then there is a lot of white or negative space on the sides. If you don't want or don't like this style, you can set it to be full width, which basically makes every all the blocks full width. They stretch to the width of the screen. They're no longer centered. So you can choose between these two layouts here. Maybe more layouts will come in the future, especially for forms where we will show one question at a time instead of seeing all the questions at once. Maybe we will be adding pages and things like that. But in the meantime, there is only two options for the layout, centered and full width. Now, I'm gonna keep on centered just so I can show you all the other options. Now, the background color is the default background color of the main page. So if I, I can change that to anything, I can change it to red, to yellow, to gray, and so on. I'm gonna keep it on gray for now. And now, the block style. So the page style has mainly two options right now, the layout and the background color. We will be adding fonts and text color very soon as well. You can actually use Google Fonts right now, but I will, uh, you will have to use a little bit of code, a little bit, um, uh, you just need to go and sort of copy some, uh, some code and paste it into the style sheet section here, which we have an article on in the help center, but I will, I will, I will also show you how to do that to, towards the end of this webinar. But the page style has two options, centered, and uh, full width and the background color as well. Now the block style is basically the default style of all the blocks. Now, as you know, your proposals, invoices, contracts, and forms are all built or based on our block system, which is basically this. It's, you know, uh, you can add a, an image as a block, you can add a canvas and you can drag things around. So these are called blocks. And all of these section, all of these features, proposals and invoices are based on a block. So when I refer to a block, it will be this or that or this. So if I go back to the design tab here and I click and I navigate to the block style, I can change the style of all the blocks at once. So here, for example, I wanna change from white to let's say uh, blue. So here we go, it changes to blue. And I can change the text color, let's say to gray or to make it more obvious here, red. Obviously, I'm not designing something pretty right now. I just, I'm just trying to show you all the options. Um, here we go. So you can add padding to things as well. So if you want to add more padding to your pages, you can add more padding. So currently it's on 30 pixels. But as you can see, I can add more padding between the sections. I'm gonna put it back to say 40. You can also add margins between the blocks. So I, as you can see, I can add margins between them. And you can add the radius, which is basically the corners. You can make them up sharp or you can make them a little bit smooth by adding a little bit of border radius to them. As you can see right here, it's just in the corner. Now, what's really cool about these three options is you can actually choose if you want to just add or just adjust a corner, one corner or one side of this certain block by clicking on the, on the individual corners option. This will then divide the input into four inputs. Each represents one of the options. As you can see, I can, for example, remove the margins from the bottom um, or actually from the side. So I'm gonna remove the one on the left and the one on the right and only keep margins on the top and the bottom. So you can customize it um, per corner or per side as well. Now, the last option we have here is the shadow option, which allows you to add shadow to these blocks. So let's say I'm gonna add some black shadow here you set this to zero again, zero. As you can see, the shadow has been added. I can make it glow, adding yellow. Here we go. So again, I'm not designing anything pretty. I just want to show you the options. But here is what you could do um, with basically using the options that we provide here. Drag and drop. There is no need to code anything. You can change the style of it. Now, what's even more cool is that you can even style uh, on block level. So the block style here is actually applied to all the blocks within the proposal or invoice or contract or form. But let's say you want to apply a specific style or change something in a specific particular thing in one block. You can now click on the block, certain block, this one, 
this one or that one. And then the block style will show you options just for that block. So now I can actually make this block say red instead of blue. So just to summarize, we have a design tab, which has two options by default. It has the, it has the page style, which gives you uh, two options to customize the, the main page, the main container. And then you have the block style, which basically applies uh, customization to all of the blocks at once. It's the default customizations of all the blocks. And then if you click on certain blocks, you can actually customize them even further. Just these particular blocks that, you've, that you sort of selected. Now, these are the basic styling options that Pluto offer at this time. Um, very, very soon, next week or so, we will also add an option to add background images, which you can add now using the style sheet section, but we want to make it even easier for you by simply applying uh, or uploading an image, and then you can apply it as a background image. And you can choose if you want to show it on the left, on the, on, on the right, or in the center as well. Phones will also be coming very soon, and that should give you all the design options you need to style your um, basically proposals or contracts or invoices however way you want. Now, before I move any further, um, I just want to remind everybody that I've created a quick form using Plutio, and here is the link to it, which will ask, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it towards the very end of this webinar and answer any questions you might submit in that form. So I'm going to paste the link one more time here. So if you have any questions about the design editor, submit it in a form I've just uh, sort of added to, to the chat. I'm going to give everyone about two minutes and then we I'll be back to continue and go to stage number two, which is the canvas builder. Um, you're going to be so amazed. It's going to be amazing when I show you this. Um, it's going to give you so much creativity and it will allow you to create whatever designs you want. I'm going to show you that in two minutes. Be right back. Oops, can you hear me guys? Sorry, sorry about that. Um, okay, here we go. We're, I think we're back. Are we back? Okay, fantastic. Awesome, sorry about that. Right, so what I was saying is now I'm going to show you the Canvas editor. And it's available on, on any feature, such as proposals, invoices, contracts, or even forms. You can find it from the block section. So if you click on plus and then click on canvas, now it will show up right here. So what it offers is it basically offers you a blank canvas, which you can do anything you want in. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to make this full screen and you can do that by clicking on this little icon here. And now we're full screen. So as you can see, it's very similar to, let's say, Photoshop or Illustrator or Canva, um, if you're aware of any of these tools. So you can add text. So I'm going to add a quick text here just to show you the options. You can scale it however way you want. You can rotate it, as you can see, which is fantastic. And if you click on it, you'll be able to see even more options. You can add, you can change the format, such as the style, the phone style. Um, you can make it bold, italic, you can make it centered, you can make it aligned on the right, and so on. Um, you can add colors to it, fill color, stroke color, you can add opacity as well. And you can add shadows if you want. 
um, you can also add animation. So if you want it to animate, for example, bouncing like that. So when someone opens the proposal or an invoice, you sort of say welcome or uh, thank you for choosing us and it sort of, uh, you know, fade in or bounce in. So we will add more uh, preset animation options here very soon. But in the meantime, you also have some advanced one that you can do it however way you want. And you can add more than one animation frame so you can create some complex animations as well. Here you can link to it. Um, okay, I'm doing this on, on a local, so it's not working. But you click on it, it will be able to link to objects. So you can add images, icons, or text, click link, and it will link to it. So you can create advanced linking as well. And the last option, I believe, which I'm going to show you in a second, I'm just going back to the, to the editor here, is a tool tab. So let's say it's a button or a small amount. If you add text and you want to add more information to it, if the, if the client hovers over it, whatever object it is, um, it will show a small tooltip tool with the text inside that you can specify right here. So um, I'm going to also show you the other options. So now I showed you text. You can add images if you want. So I'm going to try and upload an image now. So let's go, let's go here and start Google. See if anything shows up. Okay, here is an image that we can use just for demonstration. Here we go. So now you can add an image. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Here we go. And you can rotate it as well. And you have more options. So if you cl click on the image, it will also give you more options here. So you can do things to that image as well. Now, the cool thing is also you can add shapes. You can add um, a circle. Let's say I'm going to add a circle here. And I'm going to give it a color. You can set a color to it. Here we go, let's say red, and then you can move this text above it. So you click on layers right here, and then you can move the text above it. So you click on a text or a circle, move that to the very bottom, or you can use the center to front, and that will move it right here. So you can create things like that. And now we also have a draw feature. So you can basically draw things like that. And um, the option is right there. So you can create any shape that you want as well. Um, here we have an elements feature, which basically gives you a, uh, access to a library of icons that you can simply drag and drop into your Plutio canvas. We will be adding more options to this very soon. So like illustrations, animations, and things like that, that you can just simply drag and drop. For example, you can, uh, if you know, I want to drag and drop this uh, grapes icon, I can just drag and drop it here. Then I can resize it however way I want as well, like that. Here we go. Now, this is fantastic. Why? Because it really gives you the freedom to create whatever design um, elements you want. And it doesn't have to be like the whole proposal. So as you can see, it's, it's a block. So it can be part of a design. So I could, for example, create a canvas just to create a little bit of um, sort of divider between the blocks or between the pages. I can add a uh, canvas to be a sections or I can do um, something a bit more sort of interesting, which is something I've created already here. A quote like that, you can add things like this. And remember, you can save all these blocks as templates. So ultimately you can actually create as many blocks as you want for all different things. For example, you can create a block about a, ser a particular service that you sell or a quote or multiple quotes. And then when you create a proposal, you can simply click on the add and then add these templates however way you want and when you need them. Let's say, for example, a client asks um, or you believe a client is interested in a logo design and you don't really, really offer that in by default. So you could potentially create a block that talks about logos and how to design logos and the pricing of logos, etc. And that will be template. So you click to add it and it will simply add it into the proposal without rebuilding anything. Um, and here's what I did with the Canva. I basically created a quote section that I add to proposals. And as you can see, this is based on an image that I've uploaded, an, an element, an icon, which I used from the element section here. So if you, can, if you type arrow, it will filter down the options and it will show you the arrows. So I've chosen an arrow and then I styled it in a way so it looks like this. And then, then I added text and another icon right here. And look how nice it looks. Now, if the background is also um, the same, you know, as this, it will it will fit nicely. But if not, you can also change the background color of the canvas by clicking on the canvas properties right here. 
So right now it's red, I can change it to, let's say, the, the purple, the blue tier purple. And look, it's fantastic. It's nice, it's done. So I'm gonna click again and change it to another color. And let's say green, here we go. It's very simple and it's, um, it just gives you unlimited creativity. Now, this is the canvas folder. Um, I'm gonna also give everyone a couple of minutes to ask any questions about this canvas folder by filling the form. Don't forget to fill the form. You can also ask in the chat. I will try and look, but to make sure I don't miss anything, please fill that form. So, so far, um, we have covered two things. We've covered the design editor and all the design options that you have. Um, we've also covered the canvas folder that you have right now. Um, you have access to all these features right now. Um, they're, they're out of beta. Um, before I move forward to the forms and show you the forms and then ask, uh, sorry, answer any of your questions, I'm gonna show you very quickly um, some advanced customiz customizations that I've done um, using the CSS style sheet. And I'm just gonna give you sort of um, an overview of how you could also use them. So if I go back to proposals here, or actually we have the invoice section here. I'm gonna preview. For everyone who didn't see this at the very beginning, here's an invoice that I built with Plutio. Um, and I will upload this to the templates library very shortly after this webinar. So you, can, so you will have access to this and you can see how I have built it. You can customize it however you want and copy and paste things from it to other invoices and proposals as well. Um, see, you, I, I get a lot of questions about how you how do you add these icons to the invoices or proposals? Or in, in particular, where do you find these icons? Um, a lot of people don't have the necessarily the design experience or the tools or skills to do so. But what I use, and I like it very, very much, is called um, flaticon.com. It gives you hundreds and actually thousands, tens of thousands of free icons that you can use. Um, and my favorite sort of feature about this tool is that you can select icons and then you can customize the colors of them before you download them. So you don't actually have to edit them in a, a third party tool. So these icons that I've used here um, in, the, in the proposal, in the invoice template, these three icons are actually from here. So you select the icon that you want from, from flaticon.com library. And then if you open the icon, click on the edit icon button right here, and then you can actually change the colors however way you want, and then you can download it and upload it into your invoices or proposals, just like I've done right here. Um, just to show you the option, it's this one here. So when you add items, there will be a cover, an item cover section, which you can upload um, uh, um, sort of images too. Now, I've seen some really creative proposals and invoices which has animated GIFs, so people actually create some sort of GIFs and upload them here and it's so attractive, it's so amazing. So if you know um, if you know of any GIFs or uh, if you sort of um, want to use them, you can, you can also upload GIFs to these items, not only static images, just wanting you to know that. Um, so I'm also getting, oh, I didn't share the screen. Sorry about that, okay, so screen share, here we go. I'm gonna go back and show you the flat icon website. So here is the website I was referring to earlier on. Um, you can see here is the, the, the collection of icons. So if you go to flaticon.com, you can see all these icons, they're beautiful and they're free. Click on any icon and then you can customize the colors of the icons um, right here. You can change the colors as you can see and you can then download it. Once you download it, you can then upload it to the uh, invoices or proposals from the item cover section. So each, I each item uh, row has a cover image which you can upload um, icons and images to it. And I was also saying earlier on, you can also upload GIFs to it as well. Okay, so before I move forward to the forms and show you what we've been working on and what you will have access to very soon, let me show you a little bit, uh, let me talk to you through the grid system. So this section here is actually built using the grid system and I have two grids, one inside the other one. So what I did is I'm, um, I added a text, a content section, which is here, so a content block. And then I added a grid. So here's the grid option. It's very, ne it's next to the table, between the table and the code block. So click on grid and that will then give you multiple options. Two grids, three and four, as well as two, one of them is smaller than the other. So let's say I'm, 
first I added two of them. So here's two grids. And you'll be able to see the borders when you hover over them. So here's the first section, here's the second section. And then you can type something here. So you can add content in this grid. So for example, here's test and then another, or let's say column two, column one. So as you can see, I added two. And now you can add even more or you can remove one if you don't want. So by clicking on the grid, and then clicking on this little configuration icon, it will open another menu, which then allows you to add more grids. Now I have four, I have two more grids. So how is this um, useful? Well, you can create things like here. So you can ad you create advanced layouts like I did for the invoice header right here, and you can add as many options as you want to it. But also you can create some nice galleries like I did for one of the templates. Let me go back to the templates library. Here's the template right here. So I have created this grid system, which basically showcases the, this photographer's work, as you can see, and it's fully responsive. So if, if you resize the window, it will actually um, sort of stack them above each other. And you can choose if you want it to be stacked or not. There's a little toggle on the configuration. So if I can show you um, where that is. So if you click on this little toggle, when you click on one of the grids, it will actually show you the menu with the options available. So here is stack columns on mobile, so you can make it responsive if you want, or you can make it fixed and not change if you want for some advanced sort of um, layout. I'm gonna actually go and add this template so I can show you how it's done. I think it's in test, I'm gonna go here. Proposals, I think it's somewhere right here, so it's maybe this one. I think it's this one, here we go. So as you can see, here is the grid system that I've created and it has the images. So these are actually individual images. Um, you can do whatever you want in these grids. I can even add more text if I want between these images. And you can add a third grid if you want, as I said. So here we go, we, we now have three. So I can upload images to it very easily like this. So here we, talk, here we go, the design editor, the grid system and the canvas folder. Um, I can't wait to answer your questions about these. Now, shall we talk about forms? Or shall we leave that as a surprise when forms launch? You tell me. Fantastic, okay. Well, here's forms. Um, you guys can still see my screen, yeah? I just don't wanna mess things up again. First, the voice wasn't, wasn't working and then I missed sharing my screen. So you can see my screen, yeah? Awesome, okay. So, forms will look very similar to this. Um, there's a lot of things that we still need to work on but it's really nearly done. It's only a couple, maybe a week or so before we release it to everybody. And it's, it's amazing. Now, let me show you um, how it works. So you will, see, you, you will see a new tab called forms, like you can see here. And it, it's very similar layout to your contracts and proposals and invoices, because our aim after all is, although we wanna bring all these tools in one place, we wanna make it as consistent and as convenient and as intuitive as possible. So, you know, everything will look very similar, um, even though it's completely different functionality. So here we go. I think I've created a form by default. Um, so here is the form builder. It's currently published. So I'm going to make this draft so I can show you the options that we have. It will look very similar to this. Here you have two tabs. You have the editor and you have responses tab. I'm going to show you the responses tab once um, I actually finish this sort of webinar because um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna answer everyone's questions and if you submitted your questions in a questions form, I will show you how that responses uh, work. So we're gonna go through the responses there. Now, you can click on the plus, plus icon 
and it will have an input block. You click on input and then it will add a new input. Now you can select from these options. We have short text, long text, drop down, multi choice with images that you can add images to, email address, phone number, an address which have, um, I'm going to show you in a second actually, I'm going to add it so you can see it. You have address, you can add a number, you can add a date, a link, a signature, and we're now working on ability to upload files as well, where it will allow you to, uh, you know, allow you to create a, an input that we, people can upload files to, one file or multiple files. But what's also cool, which we're currently working on as well, is that you can add items. So if I add an item, just like you can do with invoices and proposals, you can specify the amount. For example, let's say you're selling a, um, a, a, a coaching session, a session or a training session or an event and so on. So you can actually add, for example, event ticket and you can add just like you would add an item to an invoice. And when you do that um, in the forms, when the form is submitted, it will actually ask the, the person who submitted the form to pay using Stripe or PayPal, depending on the payment method that you specify. So they can actually pay before the form is submitted. So you can go creative and do um, things like that as well. Now, let me give you a little bit more uh, sort of an overview or of the options that these inputs have. So I showed you how you can add inputs. Each input has the type, so you can specify the type of the input and you can specify the label. So the main question, so let's say this is the address input. So this would say um, your address and here a description. So if I want to add a little bit more details to it, so please enter your address. I'm going to show you how this looks in a second. And so we have the label, the main question, and then we have description, which goes above that label here. Then we have more options. If you click on the block settings, you can make it required or not. You can add a placeholder. You can add a default value. You can add a tooltip so you can provide more information, more helpful, helpful information so they can fill in the input. You can override the error message if you want. So for example, by default, we would say, let's say if it's required and they haven't filled the input, the default error message will be something like this input is required, but you can actually override that and have your own error message there as well to give it a little bit more customization. And here, before, before I talk about the unique ID, here we have the state, so you can set it as active or disabled, so you can hide it if you want as well by uh, clicking on visibility. So you can hide it or show it and you can make it active or deactivate it for the time being. Now, the unique ID is going to open the door to some crazy user cases. You'll be able to um, pre-fill specific, specific fields depending on where the user came from, for example. So let's say if the user came from Facebook or you know clicked on your website from Facebook or Twitter or let's say YouTube. Um, obviously, these information are provided in the URL. So if you go for, to Facebook and then navigate somewhere else, you usually have a reference where that user came from. And you can add details to that URL as well. You can add name, you can add some you know uh, address, you can add some options like that. And what this does is then you can specify to fill particular inputs with dynamic information depending on where the user comes from. So with the unique ID of each individual input, you can actually do some really advanced stuff as well. And we will offer, right now we don't have an interface for it. You can do it using code, um, but we will be adding an, an interface for it in the soon future as well. So these are the options and they're available uh, to, to in per input. So each of these inputs have their own options uh, block settings. So you can add options to it individually. So things like, for instance, let's say, um, so I'm going to add a new input and let's say uh, a number. So things like the number input it has a bit more, more uh, options like minimum characters and maximum characters. So you can specify things like that as well. So that's how you add inputs and that's how formats would look. Um, and now I'm going to show you a preview. So here, for example, the items that I've added, um, here's the address, here's the main label description. Um, here's the name, here's some other inputs I added. Here's a number input. And again, this is fully customizable. You can, again, you access the design editor from here and customize it however way you like. 
Now, for the forms, there, there are more designing, uh, design options, such as the label text color, for example. I'm going to change that to red so you can see. So this is the label color. The description, I can change it to, let's say, green. As you can see here now, it's changed to green. The value text, so when you actually enter, whatever you enter will be in that particular color that I have selected, and so on. And then it has the same options that I've showed you earlier on in this webinar um, when I introduced the design editor. Because all the block system, um, everything that is based on a block system has very similar features and design options. So, with, I'm going to now show you a bit more, op, uh, a few more options that forms will have. Um, let's cover the activation date, a date. So you can actually, once you create a form, you can specify a particular date of which you want that form to become available to everybody. So it become published, it's live, but it will it will not accept any submissions unless the activation until the activation date has been reached. You can also specify an expiration date. So you can say, I want this form to expire and no more submissions after 24 days from now or in a particular date and time as well. You can also set a submission limit. So let's say I, you want to receive up to 100 submissions and that's it. So you can specify that right here and once the form re reaches 100 submission, it will be locked automatically. Now, you can also specify the currency per form. So as, as you said, you can actually charge people and accept payments through the form. So when the form is submitted, they will um, put you will ask for their details. So it charges them there and then, and you can specify the currency and payment method right here. You can also add custom fields if you want. Right now, custom fields are for internal use. So you can create custom fields, for example, like um, type of a form. It can be uh, client surveys or it can be uh, content requests. So you can create a form that basically requests content from clients. So when you work on projects, obviously you want some assets from these clients. And, and so you can create a form that basically structure everything in a way that you want. So the client can upload the files, images, logos, text, etc., and you'll receive it all the same way. Now, we have three pages. Each form has the form page, which is this one, and it has the intro page, which is um, a page that appears before the form. You can obviously show that and not show it if you want. So by default, it doesn't show, but as soon as there is content inside it, it will show. Now you can add you know, a welcome text, you can add um, things like that to it, you can add a video if you want, an image, you can customize it however you want, and then there's this button. Once clicked, it will take them to the actual form page, just like a welcome page or introductionary page of the form before you show the form. And then finally here we have the confirmation page, which is basically the thank you page. So once the form is submitted, we will automatically redirect them to the confirmation page. Right now there is no redirect to a URL, but that's something we are going to be introducing very soon as well. And um, just to, to confirm, all these pages have, are based on a block system, so you can add blocks to them, you can add videos, images, text, whatever you want. So that's form. Um, and now once you create a form, you can actually copy the link to it so you can share it through a link or you can embed it on your website or anywhere else as well using this embed code right here. So it's not restricted to only Plutio. Um, and again, you can save it as templates. So very soon, once the form is submitted, you will see some really new exciting templates added to our templates library um, of forms and servers that you can use within a click of a button. Okay, so that's form. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Plutio account and I'm going to click through to the Plutio Live Workshop Questions form, which I've cr created earlier on before uh, this workshop. So let's see if there's any responses at all, we will go through them. And if there's any questions, we'll go through them. If not, I'm just going to go through the chat. So we have 32 questions. So I'm going to click through to the form responses. So now I'm going to click to responses tab. And now we should be able to see all these questions and all these answers. Right, so here on the side, you have the list of all the responses. By default, they will get an ID. So if you ask the, the, the if you add a, to a name or an email to the form, then this will be replaced by a name or an email. If you didn't add any, anything like that, it will basically show an ID. You can favorite 
some of these responses so you can actually filter them or sort them and uh, and so on. So for example, if you, let's say, created a form for an applicant, you know, a job application or something like that, and you can now favorite which ones you're actually considering to take them to the next level. So you can filter out everyone who's not starred or not favored and keep everyone who is, which is fantastic um, to help you get things done. Now, you can also search, filter, and order. Now here is the responses. Each obviously has the favorite um, icon and the delete icon if you wanna remove it. You can, um, the ID of it's right here. And then there's a note section. We added this because we really believe that a lot of the submissions that we usually get through forms, we wanna add notes to it, uh, notes to it to keep us sort of, you know, uh, sometimes we wanted to add even a small note, but we would lose it eventually. If there is no place that we can add it with the form itself, with the answer or submission itself. So we added the notes section for you to add things to it. For example, if this is, well, let's talk about this live scenario. So this is a form that I created for everybody in this workshop to ask questions. So I can say, I can add a note to this particular question saying, this is such a great question and so on. And I can filter these responses if they have um, uh, sort of notes or not. This will become uh, useful very soon as well. Now, one of the features we're working on, which is going to change things, is the ability to reply to responses right from here. Because remember, we have inbox built into Plutio, which allows you to email people from within Plutio. So soon, once you, once you actually receive the, these, these responses, there will be a reply button. You click on it, and then you can start a conversation about this particular response right there. It's going to be fantastic, because then you'll have a thread of the responses or conversation that you had about this particular response right there. You don't have to go anywhere else, which is going to be so great. Um, okay, so let's go through the questions that everyone asked during this webinar. Can the forms be connected to the contact in Plutio? For example, if someone fills out a form and is a user of some kind in our account, will it recognize it? Very good question. Now, Forms, at, it's at very early stages. In fact, it hasn't yet been launched, it's still in beta. So we will definitely be working on things like that to connect all these tools together. So yes, that is going to be on a roadmap. Do the form support custom validation and conditional logic? Conditional logic is coming up. We're working on it, which will basically, so the reason we didn't, we're not gonna launch it with this uh, release is or version of, of the form is because we are working on automation. And it's going to have that sort of um, freestyle tree uh, editor where you can sort of, you know, the water flow editor where you can just drag and drop conditions and uh, logic and things like that into a canvas and you can connect them to each other. So we want to offer the same sort of functionality to, to obviously to offer you a consistent experience, intuitive experience. So we're waiting to do that first and then we're gonna, we're willing introduce it to forms to build conditional logic. It's gonna be amazing. It's, I've already done the designs for it and it's looking perfect. Right, what about user privacy? So obviously that is, um, it's, it's, it's you who have to do that because obviously you're the person creating the form. Um, with Plutio, you know, everything is secure. All your data is encrypted. All your data is saved securely in our database. It's backed up every single minute. So we do everything we can to make sure everything is encrypted and everything is securely saved. But if you're creating a form and you want to sort of be compliant to a particular law, make sure that you do that in the form itself by adding, let's say, a checkbox that says, yes, I approve, or you add a little bit of terms note that says, you know, if you submit this form, then you, then you agree to our terms and conditions. So that is actually to, you know, for you, not for us. We did our best to protect you and us. Um, but if you're creating a form, you'll have to do something like that. Can the new forms be embedded? Yes, and I showed that option earlier on. Uh, from actions, you can add, uh, you can choose the embed form and it will uh, generate a code which you, you can copy and paste into any website and it will add the form to it. The client portal. Okay, well, the client portal is actually very similar to what you see right here. It's it's the same interface. Um, it's exactly the same interface, but it has different permissions. So for example, the client will not be able to see all of the project only the projects that you add them to as a client. So make sure that you go to settings, you, then you go to permissions, and then you click on client role. And here you can specify all the permissions of a client and you can see what the client can do and can't do. 
but the portal is very, very similar. We, keep, we kept it the same interface to keep things um, consistent. But remember, with the dashboard coming this year, you'll be able to create your own client portal with your own dashboard widgets and so on. So this is going to, to go next level um, in a few months time. I'm gonna go back to forms and to the questions. Okay, so is it possible for me to upload PDFs to forms? This will be very possible. Yes, we're actually working on right, on right now. So when we launch forms publicly, this option will be available. Uh, okay, so, well, technically, the for, once form release, uh, the API uh, for it will also be released. So it will be, there will be calls supported. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, which calls that will be supported, but there will be a lot of um, API sort of functionality, yes. Okay, the variables that are used in the invoice headers. I'm gonna go back to the invoice here um, that I created earlier on. I think it's down invoices. It's this one, I think. Oh no, the one before it, so here we go. So these variables, so obviously I preset them. I hard coded them in or had hard typed them in, but you can Click on this magic wand right here. It will say variables. Click on it, it will, it will show you a drop down menu with all the options that you can choose. This is the business, so your information, your business details. Then you've got the client details, which will pre fill. So, uh, for example, I can add the client first name here, and it will show the client first name automatically once you assign this invoice to a client. You have a lot of options right here as well. Now, each feature, for example, invoices have different variables than an invoice. So um, sometimes we might not have the same variables. Client details, your details are pretty much consistent across all the features, but things like invoice uh, issue date, for example, is only available available in the invoice feature. Going back to questions, I wonder which tab that is now. Okay, it's this one. Maybe add a portfolio page for to list. Add a portfolio page for users who want to share their designs, more inspiration. This, this sounds fantastic. Uh, that's why, why we have the templates library. So if you go to templates.plutio.com or go to plutio.com and then click on the templates button from the top menu, you will access our templates library, which soon will be filled with templates that I'll be creating and the community will be creating as well. Um, repurpose, can you repurpose the block templates in Canvas for outside usage? Uh, okay, so basically you want to uh, export it as an image or as a PDF or something like that. Well, actually that sounds fantastic. We might as well just create a new Canvas uh, tab here and then it will allow you to create designs which then you can just export and use um, other places. This is such a great idea. I'm going to add it to the roadmap just after this webinar. Brand color question, can we save certain colors in the picker to use? Yes, you can. So you can save um, your brand colors or default colors so you can easily choose them when you're designing things. So you can do that from settings. So you click on settings from the main menu and then um, I believe it's under, let me just wait for this to load. I believe it's on the uh, general settings, the default color palette. So you can specify um, colors here and these colors will be ready for you to select whenever there is a color picker. So yes, you can do that. Going back to the questions. So canvas look on mobile. Well, it is, it is responsive, so it resizes. Um, however, things within the canvas do not stack. So they don't move around. It just the whole canvas size uh, resizes. So be careful when you add text to it. If the text is too small on mobile, obviously we're gonna it will be narrower, which means the content of it will be smaller. So if you add text that is small, it will be barely read readable. So make sure you test that on mobile because canvas obviously you know it can't be responsive since it's a free sort of style designing uh, editor. You can add anything to it. It will be nearly impossible to make it responsive. Just testing the form, okay. Um, 
or something like this. Uh, you mean a workshop for web, for uh, Wiki? Yes, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm planning to do workshops, a lot of workshops from now on, and videos very soon. So bear with me, I'm on it. Don't worry. So this is actually something we considered: ability to have images. Um, we are looking into it, looking to connect with a couple of APIs, which will give you access to a lot of images. But in the meantime, no, we don't. However, using uh, the file stack uh, feature, so for example, if you click on, let's say, I'm going to go here, add an image, click upload. If you look, we have the web search functionality right here, which basically, it's like a Google, Google search. It's not as advanced, but say you type a car, it will show you know some cars. Now, bear in mind, these are not necessarily free to use. Um, they could be copyrighted, so be, be careful using that. But that's currently the only sort of image library that we have. But there is heaps of free image libraries around um, that you can use in the meantime. Going back to the questions. Receive part payments. Yes, you can actually receive part payments. So what you do is you create installments. So when you create an invoice, I'm going to go ahead uh, to the invoices tab. And I'm going to open an invoice. There is a agreement drop down menu right here, which gives you four options. One payment, one time payment, multiple payments, recurring invoice and recurring billing. So if you click on multiple payments, you will then be able to specify the first, the first invoice and the second invoice. So you can and then it will automatically split the invoices depending on the amounts that you specified. So, yeah, you can do that if you mean specify uh, if you mean let's say you've created one invoice and one installment or one of payment to the client and they let's say paid uh, half of the payment and you want to sort of log half of that payment then that is something it's not yet available but we are working on however as a workaround you could potentially create a custom field that basically says uh, payment received and then you can add these fields to invoices that received a partial payment so then you can keep up with uh, who paid and who didn't. I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly. So if you click on custom fields and then click on invoice fields, create a new field, specify the name, it can be uh, payments and then yeah, I'll keep it as an input since it will only be a simple input. Then you can go to invoices. Oh, I created it in a wrong account. So let me just go back here, settings. Uh, custom fields, uh, invoice fields, create a field, let's say again, payments, create. Now I'm going to go to invoices and then let's say a client paid, you know, $100 for this invoice. So what I could do is I could add a custom field called payments, which is the one I've just created. And I can say $100. Um, I can even add dollar sign to it. Here we go. Not pound, dollar. And if you go back to the invoices tab, now you'll be able to see, okay, partial payments, $100 paid towards this invoice. So there is a way to keep track of it. It's not as straightforward as I would like it to be, but it's, you know, logging partial payments is something that's going to be available once we work on transactions. Because obviously we are actually planning to introduce expense tracking, uh, income tracking, and uh, the ability to connect your account to your bank account and see all the transactions. So once we have that feature, we will allow you to add transactions and partial payments to invoices as well. This is going to be really, really, really good. Are you not able to see this? Are you guys able to see my screen? Just wanted to confirm because uh, Karen can see my screen. I just want to make sure. Okay, all good. Okay, fantastic. Right, so back to the questions. Um, here we have, what is the vision for Plutio? The designer is like eliminator for documents. Is it going to be a full CRM one day? Definitely. So our vision behind Plutio is not only giving you the, the set of tools that you need to run your business. Um, we've been working on Plutio for the past five years. And just recently we were able to you know, deploy some really exciting features such as forms. Well, forms will be released very soon, but we released, we launched Wiki, we launched more advanced options to contracts, proposals, and invoices. We are planning to provide you with everything you'll ever need. 
Um, and then we will add even more advanced features to it, such as artificial intelligence and machine learning to really help set your business on autopilot. So what, you know, the roadmap right now is um, we are going, we have quite a lot to do uh, in terms of uh, adding some final touches and polishing up to the current features that we have. So we're going to be working on a brand new tasks page, which will make the tasks page, the main tasks page usable. It would be like an agenda, what you need to do today, what you've got to do tomorrow. You can move things around from today to tomorrow so you can postpone them easily. And um, then we are going to work on um, the dashboard, which will allow you to create dashboards for yourself or your team or your clients. So you can create some really sort of welcoming in brand on brand sort of page. So when your client when your clients log in into your into their Pluto account, well, your business account or your or their client portal, they'll be able to see a page that you create. You can add videos to it. You can add um, images, text. You can add widgets, dynamic widgets. For example, you can add a widget that says, you know, um, you have two unpaid invoices with a button to go to the invoices tab. So you will with dashboards, it will it will be super easy for your clients to collaborate with you through their client portal. And then we are going to work on automation. That is going to be a game changer. You'll be able to automate almost every action in Plutio. For example, if a task is completed, then move it to a different task group. Or if a task has been added to a particular task board or a task group, assign it to a particular person. If a task is completed, do a certain task. Um, if an invoice is paid, create a proposal. If a proposal is signed, create a project. If a project is created or completed, create another invoice. Or if a form is submitted, create a contact. You'll be able to do almost everything. You'll be able to set your business truly on autopilot. And I say truly because once you have all the tools that you need in one place, and then you have all this data in one place, you no longer need to use any third-party apps to connect them all together. You can do that right in within Plutio. So that is basically um, our vision for the very soon future. But we're going to be working on so many exciting stuff that is going to come in next year, such as the ecosystem, portfolio builders, and the social network built right into Plutio, which means everyone will be able to contact and connect with everyone else to work together on projects and do so much more. I can't talk more about this, but 2020 is 2021 is so, so exciting right to the next question is there some way to import all the templates at once uh no so there is no way to add all the templates in the templates library into your Pluto account that would uh, you know it, it just doesn't uh i don't see it working you would have to add them one by one do the proposals form easily produce something the client can print yes so um the submissions is what you see here in front of you right now on a screen. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty straightforward and you can print this um, as well. It's very clear, very, very clean and very clean, uh, clear. So we have, I think, I'm gonna scroll down, where did we go? How to set a date range in a task filter. Dynamic filters are coming very soon. Um, you, uh, you're aware that we've actually released um, saved filters. So now you can save filter. So let's say I'm going to add a, a filter here. You will have now the option to save this filter um, as well. So you can access it very easily and you can create as many saved filters as you want. Dynamic filters are coming very soon. Any integrations with third party is currently only possible via Zapier, Integromat, and our API. Um, native integrations are something we are going to be working on early next year. There is no device preview option, but you can simply resize the window or click preview and then resize the window to see how it looks. Uh, okay, this is probably a, um, a technical issue whilst I was doing the webinar. Is it possible to add an invoice and area for clients to add their credit card for payments? Captured. Yes, so basically when a client logs into their Pluto account, they can go to settings and then they can click on billing and plans. Now you will see the, this, you know, all this information, but your client we will we'll only see the billing cards 
they will only see this section. And that basically allows them to add cards to their account so they can choose to use these cards for any future payments. Uh, if you create subscription invoices, if you create a one-off invoices, or if anything that you want to send the client that it needs to charge them, they can use a preset card as well, and they can add as many cards as they want right here. Uh, remember, they will not see any of the other options. They will only see this section here. For the live view, okay, I'm using something called um, OBS. It's OBS. Um, it's pretty well, pretty pretty good. If you know how to use it, which I'm, you know, getting used to it. Okay, will custom resizing for images in the templates forms be available soon? Okay, so I'm gonna go to an editor, I'm gonna open one right here. So when you add blocks, you can obviously add an image block. So this image block stretches from edge to edge. You can't resize it. However, if you wanna add images that you wanna resize, add a content block, a normal content block like this one, then simply add an image to it. So I'm just gonna copy and paste an image from, let's say here, copy image, and I'm just gonna paste it right here. Here we go. So you can now resize the image however way you want. And you can even show it on the left or on the right as well. So if you want to have more control over the images that you add, don't add them as a block image, add them as an image into the content block. Okay, going back to the questions. Okay, there are. Oh, um, Stratos has a couple of questions. Uh, confirmation with your tasks. Okay, noted. Uh, basically, uh, ability, you know, tasks will have so many more advanced features coming when we do the uh, main tasks page refactor or redesign. You will see more more features like activity logs, so you can see when thing, particular things has changed. For example, if um, if someone completed the task or updated a certain un input or a custom field within the task, you'll be able to see that. Yes, groups are coming very soon to our CRM because we are planning to work on a leads management system and we are we are refactoring our people section, the contact section. We're gonna make it even more advanced. You can actually schedule meetings, you can add notes and events to it, and you will also be able to see information such as where they come from, you know, sources um, and things like that. And you'll be able to create groups so you can create segments. For example, if you have, let's say, 100 clients in Plutio, let's say you want to send an email campaign to, let's say, people who paid you over $1,000, then you can create a segment based on based uh, on previous projects that was worth more than $1,000 and so on. So you, the, Plutio will become so more advanced than it is right now in a very soon future. So yes, groups and segments are coming to people. Okay, this seems like a, a technical issue, so I will look at that after this webinar. Can you save your pricing items so you don't have to retype your plans? Absolutely, yes you can. Um, so if I go to the editor right here, so these items, you can save them as a template and you can even create items in templates uh, by default. So go to templates from the main menu, click on templates and then click on items. Here then you can actually add a preset items. As you can see, you can you know add um, whatever information you want and then you can add them easily to invoices. So I'm gonna go back. I think you can also create a block for invoices and you can add items to it. So if you wanna add more than one item, then you can create a whole sort of item section um, to it as well. You can add more than one item here as well and you can easily add it um, into your invoices. So for example, this one, so I'm gonna call it item one, item two. So items section or items block. So I'm gonna go back to invoices now. And what I'm going to do is add a block and then I'll be able to see it here. So you'll be able to actually add it from here. It's the same exact concept. So once you do that, it will add the items to you into the block section. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Oh, actually before I move forward, um, if you're trying to apply an item here, you can type uh, slash and it will show this menu, shows template and then apply uh, 
the item template. We are improving the ability or the functionality of applying templates very soon, but in the meantime, you can do that, or I advise doing it through the block system, as you can see right here. Back to the questions, we only have a couple left. So how do I do electronic signatures and create specific number on the invoice? Um, obviously invoices can't be signed, it can only be paid. So you can't actually accept uh, signatures on invoices. Um, you can do that on proposals and forms, um, however. The roadmap, uh, James, I've just talked about that earlier on a few minutes ago, um, but you can access our roadmap through roadmap.pollutio.com. Yes, you can image the website. Uh, we, we covered that earlier on. Reporting. So as you probably know, uh, reporting is not yet available on Plutio, but it will come once we release dashboards because then you'll be able to see, you know, graphs and stats of everything about your business. How many invoices paid, how many invoices um, are not paid or still pending and so on. And then you'll be able to export these in PDF format or Excel sheets. The last question on this form is sales model. Yes, that the Leads system is something we are working on. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, however, you can use a template which is available available in our templates library. So if you go to templates and type leads, there are a couple ones. Uh, our official one is called Leads Pipeline. There's another one made by a um, a really great user of Plutio. You can see it here. So this is one leads template that you can use. And there is here's, here's another one that you can use as well. Basically, you can, you can even use Xavier to submit or create tasks in this pipeline, depending on, you know, it, when someone submits a forum or sends you a message somewhere, then you can create a task automatically. But again, once we release automation that is built into Plutio, you can automate all of this without using any third party tool. So that was the last question on the uh, forums uh, responses. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and answer any questions that you may have in a live chat. But I really hope this was helpful. Um, uh, again, you know, this is just the start for Plutio. We've just recently been able to work on all these amazing features and we have some huge plans, especially now the team has grown. So we have some huge plans in the coming few months. So stay tuned. Um, and make sure you follow us on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook as well, to be up to date with what we're working on. Uh, okay, actually, someone just asked, uh, how can I install Plutio? Well, we have a desktop app, which you can download, and we have a mobile app. So Plutio is available on, uh, um, on iPhones and Android, as well on Windows and Mac. But the desktop apps, please bear in mind, are in beta. They're not yet finalized. We are actually working on the new version as we speak right now, and the new version should be released within the next week or two. In the next week or two, you'll be able to download Plutio as a desktop app, and then you don't have you don't have to have it as a tab. And that will also give you native notifications, which are going to be amazing. Um, also, we're working on an extension. Brandon um, is working on an extension, a Chrome extension and a Firefox, Firefox extension, which will allow you to create tasks on the go, leave notes and track time and stop time as well, right from your browser. So you don't have to be in Plutio. Automation is about two to three months away from now. Yes, forms is actually embeddable. So um, Joe, we've actually covered this earlier in the webinar. You'll be able to embed your forms or share them via link. Fantastic. Okie dokie, so this, I think this, uh, this is it. Um, you know, uh, to give you, for everyone who has just joined us, I'm gonna give you a quick sort of overview of our roadmaps. I'm gonna go to roadmap.plutio.com, which you can also access as well. So here we go. And I'm going to take you through what we're planning to do because, you know, we are transparent. We want to make sure that you're aware of what we're building and we want to build what, you know, we're building Plutio for you. So it's important that you help us shape Plutio. Here's what we have on our roadmap right now. So obviously we have a couple of issues that we, are, we have to go through. So we're going to be fixing these very soon. And then we have automation. We have dashboard. We have inbox integration, which will allow you to basically create shared inboxes. So you can connect your email, email account, which we've actually introduced this 
a couple of months ago, but we uh, stopped it or disabled it for the meantime because it wasn't as robust as we wanted it to be and it was causing a lot of problems, especially when you uh, download a lot of emails. So we are going to be reintroducing shared inbox very soon this year as well. Um, we're going to have an improved new timeline. We're going to improve things like the canned responses. So you can actually not only save messages for your chats and for your inbox, but also if you're creating a task, um, you can also have canned responses or canned text for these particular tasks. Or let's say in comments, you can also, if you're, if you're collaborating with your clients and you sort of um, want a, a to create some preset responses to some frequently asked questions by clients, you can also do that in a comment section. So it will not only be used in Inbox, but it will be used Pluto-wide. Uh, we, are, we are polishing up our wiki, so we make it really easy for you to customize and really sort of uh, use it to its full potential. We're working on improving subscriptions. This has been, been asked for so many times, so we're working on it. It's planned and it's planned very, very soon where you'll be able to add subscriptions uh, into your proposals. So your clients will be able to, to choose uh, subscription or recurring billing uh, so recycles. And once the proposal is signed, we will automatically create these recurring invoices for them as well. So we are working on that. Um, we're polishing up Inbox as it stands right now. So you might, be, you might not be aware that Pluto actually has a live chat. So if you go to Pluteo.com, the little live chat widget on the, on the bottom right is actually powered by Pluteo. Um, you can find more information about it in the settings tab. I'm going to show you how, but here it is. If you see here, it's going to pop up in a second once the website loads. I have my own personal GIF in it and you click on it and you can actually chat. Um, you, can, you can image this on your website and you can also show it on invoices, proposals and contracts as well. Um, you can do that from settings and you can then go to inbox and then click on create a messenger and then this will allow you to create a live chat widget which you can upload uh, add to your website and pages what's even more amazing is you can if you click on contracts tab or the proposals tab you can actually connect a messenger or a live chat to them so when you send a proposal or an invoice to a client they'll be able to see that live chat widget and ask you questions right there without having to leave that particular page, which is fantastic. Okay, back to the roadmap. Um, now, some this, this feature I'm really excited about, which is, you know, all these emails that are sent out from Plutio, when you send an invoice or a proposal or a, a contract, or even when you receive a notification from Plutio about task completion or a delegation, these emails has not changed for years. And we are going to allow you to completely customize them using a drag and drop editor. So you'll be able to customize these emails, adding your own headers, your own logos. You can change the colors, add your own text, your own buttons. You can do whatever you want in these, um, in these emails. They'll be fully, fully customizable. That's something coming very soon as well. Um, and tons of new uh, improvements and fixes to current functionalities that we have. Now, as I said, automations, dashboards, uh, subscriptions, improved subscriptions, shared inboxes, and things like that are coming um, this year. And next year, we're going to focus on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and an ecosystem. We are building an ecosystem within Pluteo. So I, I really can't wait for this because we'll be able to communicate with everyone within Pluteo. Everyone will be able to create their own portfolio, their own uh, sort of page, and if you want a job, if for example, you're a designer and you do websites, websites for clients, and let's say your client asks you for a logo, you'll be able to submit a job request within Plutio, and then it will connect you with local designers that are in Plutio as well. So the whole community of Plutio will now will be available within Plutio, and you will be accessing it in a, in, in, it'll be under your fingertip. So I'm really excited about that to, to come. Okay, okay, everyone. So that's our, I think that wraps up our webinar for this, uh, th this time. Yes, uh, just so you know, our pricing will be increased once the value, it, once we release all these features. However, if you're subscribed to Plutio, don't worry at all, you are grandfathered. You'll be locked into whatever price you're in right now. But our pricing will increase for everyone new who will be joining us. So if you're not joining us, if you're not part of Plutio right now, um, I'm, I'm just saying you should, 
because once the pricing is increased and you are not you don't have an account with us yet then you will be affected but if you already have an account and you're already on our plan then uh don't worry about that at all your grandfather you will not pay a penny extra and you will access all these amazing amazing and power power powerful features okay so someone asked me to go through the questions above so i'm just going to go through a couple Forums will be released in the next two weeks. Dashboards will be worked on straight after. Yes, the tax, the tax field will be removable. It's on our roadmap to be fixed within the next week or so. So don't worry about that. You can connect Slack using Zapier or Integromat or using our API. We don't have a native integration with it just yet. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for joining us, everyone. And please don't forget to follow us on social media. Um, it will really help us attract our new amazing customers um, and help us grow, especially now, you know, we're early stage, we're very small and your contribution by just simply, you know, you know, following us on Twitter or Facebook will really, really help. Um, now, before I leave everyone, um, if you can, please leave us a review. You should receive an email um, after this webinar if you've actually reserved your spot and um, it will have a link to, uh, I think it's, I'm just not sure what it's called, but it's one of these review websites. Um, it will really, really mean great deal to us if you can leave us a review there. Um, I'm going to try and, okay, yeah, it's Trustpilot. So if you go to Trustpilot and then, you know, search for Plutio and leave a review there, I'll be ever so grateful. So thank you ever so much, everyone, for joining us today. And again, if you have any questions, you can reach us by the live chat or email um, or by the community channel. But please leave any technical questions to um, outside of the community. So if you have a technical issue or a bug, please forward it over to us by the live chat um, and not in the community. Leave the community for inspiration, um, ideas and helpful tips and resources. Um, again, thank you so much for being part of this journey. And I seriously can't wait to see what, you, just what we're going to be building in the next couple, couple of years. Um, Pluti is here to stay and here to grow and here to help you run your business and automate your business like never before. I have some huge plans and with your help, um, we will be able to create them and make them reality. So thank you very much. Have a good night. If it's night time, have a good day if it's a, if it's a daytime and I will see you in the next workshop. Bye for now.